Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. I'm joined today by Nicole Dines and Paul Strom. And this week has sadly seen the invasion by Russia of Ukraine. And we're already beginning to see the ramifications of that and how it's influencing the real asset markets, um, institutional investors adjusting portfolios, uh, reports suggesting that ESG policies have shielded Dutch pension funds from fallout of the war, as they've already divested significantly in Russia. Um, and also some, some offers of support coming through um, for what's likely to be a significant refugee crisis. In the markets, um, a lot of focus as well on uh, ESG and logistics. Um, Nicole, what have you been watching? Well, it seemed to be a, a good week for, for London. The CBRE 2022 MEA Investor Invent Intention Survey said that London is number one in uh, the most attractive city for, for European real estate investment for the second year in a row. And also Derwent, which uh, the, their survey, which is a bit of a litmus test for the central London commercial property market, said that the interest in the city of London has been rebounding sharply. And interestingly, as we often talk about uh, sustainability and sort of green buildings, the sort of uh, nine-tenths of the take-up of offices in the city was um, in a grade A building. So clearly, while vacancy rates are still higher than normal, the investors are very much focusing on the, on the sustainable, the sort of core uh, properties. And one example of that was that this week, Hobie Land, a Singapore company, bought the Scalpel, one of the shiniest new towers in the city of London for 820 million, which is obviously uh, a concrete sign of the interest of uh, Asian and international investors in general in the city of London. Another thing I followed this week, we Real Asset Media had a briefing on ESG and impact, which is one of our key themes. And our experts discussed the prospects and what's happening. I mean, it's very much um, about regulation, of course, and Christian Conrad's of PwC said that all eyes are on Europe, said that even in the US, you know, European investors, when they invest in the US market now insist on having taxonomy compliant assets, and that's really focused mine. So he said that there's a huge interest because they, obviously the EU has been a, a pioneer in, in a sort of green uh, regulation and legislation. And uh, it's not just the regulation, she said, but it's also there's focusing minds, but it's also court cases in the UK and across the world. Corporates have been sued for breaches of uh, their own corporate code of, codes of conduct and also for emissions they might have uh, emitted in the past. She said that's a really interesting you know, area to watch because it's happening all over the place and it's clearly it's become a big issue in risk management. So companies have to take into account. So they're watching the regulation. They're also watching court cases. Obviously, the regulations are the stick, uh, but, you know, our experts all said that there are lots of carrots uh, as well, a whole bunch of carrots. You know, obviously, the risk management aspect, there's the reduced costs and also reputation because obviously there's been a mind shift. So now companies are being judged not just on what they say they're doing, Doing, but what they're actually actually doing. And experts seem to agree that repurposing existing stock is very much the way to go. That's the most important. I think it should be the priority. And Abel Samaniego, the founder of Dabo, which is PropTech, said that uh, every day almost there are new tools to help companies upgrade their buildings, help companies make their buildings more sustainable. Another issue that all experts agreed on was that it's not enough to have a green building or to make uh, turn a building, a brown building to a green one, but you also have to uh, use it well. So it's very much up to the users and what they do. And um, it's, it's basically you have to bring everyone on board uh, and make sure that the performance of the building keeps you know, being at the high standards. Yeah, it was interesting to also get the perspective of Rocky Boss of Berlin Hip on the huge sums that will have to be invested over the next few years to make buildings green um, as companies implement their ESG strategies. Um, and, and that financing will be absolutely key to that transformation. Um, Paul, what have you been following? Uh, well, this week uh, we saw uh, Real Asset Media's uh, focus on logistics briefing, where we heard that it's been the most extraordinary 12 months in the world of uh, logistics. That was how Sally Brewer, head of EMEA Logistics and Industrial Research and Insight at uh, Cushman Wakefield, put it actually, she used the word bonkers. Occupational demand uh, is strongest ever across Europe at 46 million square metres. Investment volume for the year in excess of 65 billion, normally in the region of 40 billion. Uh, yield compression result, uh, resulting from investment demand regularly in sub-3% deals. Frank Porsche, uh, CEO of P3 Logistic Park, said he believes that these unprecedented levels of yield compression have been a cover, though, for many other challenges. In that, he included cost increases on the construction side, which have been so significant, about 20 to 30% in some markets, and land prices are going up too. Um, he said the yield compression cannot continue forever, so these these 
costs can't be buried in there forever. Raymond Peitzman, Vice President of Corporate Real Estate of Berlin Headquartered Online Retailer Zalando, echoed the concerns about uh, construction costs. He said the extremely high level of demand makes life difficult. Expansion is increasingly difficult with increasing construction prices and scarcity of space. He said when you do negotiations with general contractors, within two months of negotiations, the prices increase 5%. Experts there were yet to assimilate the likely effects on the supply chains of Russia's invasion of Ukraine because uh, the, uh, our event was on the same day. This week, we've also seen activity on the data center front, which is sometimes linked to logistics, but I think only in terms of construction type as the locations tend to be different. Principal real estate, the real estate investment arm of principal global investors raised 155 million from the first close of a closed end fund for investing in data center assets in Europe. Subscriptions from seven investors, including asset managed pension funds and uh, insurance companies located in France, Germany, Spain and Malaysia. Uh, the amount is one third of the total equity hard cap of 450 million, which principal is set for the fund. Principal said the fund will focus on uh, managed to core data assets, uh, data center assets, and at least 60% of the fund will be uh, allocated to core European markets in Germany, Netherlands, France, United Kingdom, and Ireland. 40% uh, secondary markets, Spain, Italy, and Switzerland. A principal real estate director of uh, European data centers, Paul Lewis, said that data centers remain appealing investments given the diversification benefits and strong risk return profile, long-term structural tailwinds supporting the sector. And lastly, we, ha we haven't heard too much from the hospitality sector recently. Obviously, COVID hit the sector fairly hard. But this week, PKF Hospitality Group launched the think tank intended to examine the future of the hotel, living, tourism, leisure sectors in the context of global change, such as globalization, urbanization, digitization, remote working, development of the sharing economy, and socio-demographic changes. Uh, they say the advent of remote working, uh, development of the sharing economy, um, will have a significant impact on our future living spaces. There's already a great appetite for innovation in the sector, which is becoming acknowledged as a viable uh, investment alternative, according to Paul Rands, who's heading the initiative. Yes, it's interesting to see that initiative in the hotels and hospitality sector. And I also noticed tying together the ESG and logistics themes we've discussed that Palmyra won approval for a 500 million logistics property impact fund. And that's the first one, I think. And it's something that we'll be following closely for our impact journal. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for joining us. And our thoughts obviously go to all of our friends and colleagues out there in the Ukraine. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the real asset markets.